Welcome to the fourth part of our JavaScript tutorial series to create the game Asteroids. Currently our code allows us to fly a ship around and smash into asteroids, but apart from that we can't do anything else, so in this tutorial we're going to create a laser effect, so we'll be able to press the spacebar and shoot these pesky asteroids. So you can go ahead and download this code if you don't already have it. First of all, let's create some constants. How about we create one called laser max, so that'll be the maximum number of lasers on screen at once. We'll set that to say 10 to begin with, so that'll be maximum number of lasers on screen at once. And we'll also have, say, the laser speed, because we'll need to know how fast these little things travel. We'll put that in, say, pixels per second. Uh, speed of lasers in pixels per second. So how will we detect when the spacebar is pressed? Well, we can go down to where we detect our other key presses. So in the key down method, just copy and paste one of those cases there. The key code for spacebar is 32. So let's label that space bar. And what will it do? It will shoot the laser. So let's just create a function name here, shoot laser. There we go, we'll implement that after. Now in the key up method, so when the spacebar is released, what should we do? Well I'm thinking when we press the spacebar we should lock the shooting, so you can only shoot once per press. So here we should allow shooting again. So when, when we release the spacebar, let's allow shooting. So we could probably handle that with a property on the ship called say can shoot. And we'll set it to true here, can shoot equals true. Let's go down and add that to the ship now. So in the new ship method, can shoot, it should start off as true, shouldn't it? We want to allow shooting to begin with. We'll also need to keep track of our lasers, so they can be kept track kept track of here in the ship, and it's just an empty array to begin with. So just below, let's create our shoot laser function. So function shoot laser. In that we want to create the laser object, and we also want to prevent further shooting. That's fairly simple to manage, just go ship dot can shoot equals false. Now before we add a new laser object, we want to check a couple of things. So if one, the ship can shoot, so if the ship can shoot, and the ship dot lasers array, the length of that is less than our laser max. Alright? If both of those conditions are true, we can add, we can safely add a new laser. So to add a new laser, we just go ship dot lasers push. We'll want to put this in curly braces because it's an object that we'll be creating here. We'll need to know the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Where will we be shooting from? I think we'll be shooting from the nose of the ship. So from the nose of the ship. And we have used that code before, just need to go down to where we draw our ship. Uh, where is it? Here it is, nose of the ship. So just copy both of those there, the x and y coordinates. Paste them in there. That'll be the y. Just need a comma there. We'll also need to know the x velocity, which will be based on the laser speed times by the cosine of the ship's angle. Lots of trigonometry in this. Uh, divided by the frame rate to get uh, pixels per frame. And similarly for the y velocity, except that it'll be the sine of the ship's angle. So let's go down and draw our lasers. We can do that after we've drawn our ship. So just after the collision, circles there in the center dot. So draw the lasers. So we'll have to use a for loop. 
var i equals zero, i is less than the ship dot lasers dot length i plus uh, plus. We'll have to set the context fill a fill style. I'm thinking we'll draw small circles to represent the lasers. Now check some of these colors out before. So I'm just going to use salmon for the laser color. It's quite nice. Uh, we'll need to begin the path to draw a small circle, and we'll need to use the arc method. Arc, and we need to know the x, so it'll be the ship dot lasers i dot x, the ship dot lasers i dot y, the radius, we'll base that off the size of the ship. So we'll go ship size, say divided by 15. The start angle is just zero. The end angle is math pi times two, which is effectively 360 degrees. The final flag doesn't matter. And we'll need to draw, uh, we'll need to call the context fill method to draw this. Let's just test that. Now they shouldn't move at this stage. Cool. So they're appearing at the nose of the ship. That's promising. And we can only, should only be able to do 10 of them. Yep. Great. So let's go down and move the lasers. So just after we move the ship, move the lasers. Again, we'll need to use a for loop. So for i equals zero, i is less than the ship lasers dot length, i plus plus. So what we'll need to do here is just go ship dot lasers i, the x position, plus equals ship dot lasers i x v, which is the velocity in the x direction. Similarly, for the y, we just need to modify it by y v. Let's test that. So shooting lasers, oh, not quite going in the direction we want. I see the problem. One of the, I guess the Y, so back up where we shoot our lasers. Shoot, shoot, shoot lasers. I see, the YV needs to have a negative there because negative is upwards on the screen. Let's give that a go. Great. Now the only issue is that once we run out of those 10 shots, there's no more. They're, they're forever flying off into space. So let's fix that up now. The first thing we can do is handle the edge of screen. So just go down to where we move our laser. Draw the lasers. Move the lasers. Handle edge of screen. So we've done this a fair few times with other objects. So all we need to do is say if, I'll just copy this, make it a bit easier for me. If the ship, sorry, the laser's x position is less than zero, then we just want to set it to equal the canvas width. Else if the laser's x position is greater than the canvas width, then we want to set it to zero. Copy all of that, we'll do the same sort of thing for the y position. The Y position, the Y, 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 and instead of the width, we'll use the height. Okay, let's give that a go. Shooting some lasers. Yep, I can only shoot 10, and as you can see, they forever fly around and around the screen. So what we'll probably need to do is set some maximum distance they can travel and then they kind of fizzle out or just dissipate or whatever. So let's do that now. Firstly, let's go all the way up the top and create a constant called say laser distance or just laser dist and let's make it a fraction of screen width. So choose a fraction, I'm going to say 0 0.6 and we'll call, we'll define this as max distance laser can travel as fraction of screen width. 
We'll also need to set up a property on the laser, so go down to Shoot Laser, and just here we'll add a property called Dist, Distance Traveled, and we'll set it, start it at zero. So let's head on down to where we move our laser. Uh, move the laser just after where we update its position. Let's calculate calculate the distance traveled. So ship dot lasers i dot distance plus equals. Now we'll have to use our Pythagoras' theorem here. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the square root of the square, so math power of uh, this here, the x velocity component, that's what we're adding each time. So the power of that, sorry, the square of that plus math power the square of the y velocity, all square rooted, should give us the distance. Now what do we need to do with that distance? Well, before we move our ship, so this will be move the, it's not the ship, is it? Move the laser. We'll want to um, check distance traveled. And we want to delete the laser if this happens, don't we? So if ship.laser.distance is greater than the laser distance, now that's as a percentage of, as a fraction, so times the canvas width. If it's greater than that, then that means it's gone far enough and we want to delete it. There's a couple of ways we can delete from an array. I'll be using the splice command, so ship lasers splice. And splice takes the start number, which is going to be i, and the delete count, which is just one. We just want to delete one thing. Now the issue with splice is that it permanently changes the size of this array, meaning our for loop will have some problems. So we can get around this, but instead of going forwards in the loop, we'll go backwards. So var i will equal the length of the array, minus one. And we'll go until i is greater than or equal to zero. And instead of incrementing, we'll decrement. So i minus minus. Uh, so that'll be removed. So we won't want to continue in this. We won't want to try to move the laser because it won't be there. So we'll hit, we'll hit, we'll write the continue command. Now all that does, it skips over the rest of this and goes to the next iteration of the for loop. So that should be okay. Let's give it a go. Shooting lasers. Yep, they are not going on forever. How about we change it to something a bit smaller? So the laser distance will change to something a bit smaller, say 0.2, just so we can get a real good feel for it. Shoot some lasers. Awesome. So we can un unlimitedly shoot these lasers because they're destroying themselves after they reach 0.2 of screen width. Let's just change that back to 0.6. Now we need to detect when the lasers actually strike the asteroids. So head down to our update function just under where we draw our lasers. Draw the lasers. So we'd like to detect laser hits on asteroids. Right? I'm thinking we'll probably need to use some variables here just to make it a bit cleaner. So we'll have the asteroid X, the asteroid Y, the asteroid R, the laser X, and the laser Y. So we'll need to do a for loop backwards again because we'll be removing asteroids. So we'll have var i will equal roids dot length minus one. Uh, i is greater than or equal to zero i minus minus. Right, so we can grab the properties of the, grab the asteroid properties. So 
So AX will equal roids, uh, roids I dot X. Similarly for the other ones, so AY, the asteroid's Y will be that, and the asteroid's radius will be that. Okay, now we can loop over, loop over the lasers. Yeah, so we'll have to work, go backwards with this one as well because we'll be removing the laser after it strikes the asteroid. We'll have to use a different variable, j. So j will equal the ship dot lasers dot length minus one j is greater than or equal to zero, j minus minus. Let's grab the laser properties. So lx will equal ship dot lasers j dot x and the ly, the laser y, will be just the dot y one. So we've got all the properties now. Now we need to detect when, detect hits, we'll just say detect hits. So what happens? How can we determine that? Well, let's use a condition. So if the distance between points, that's one of the functions we made earlier on. So the x1, y1 is the asteroid x, the asteroid y. x2 is the laser x and the laser y. Now, if the distance between the asteroid and the laser is less than the asteroid's radius, then we've got ourselves a hit. We don't need to worry about the radius of the laser, it's too insignificant, it's only small. So that's a hit. Now what do we want to do here? Well, we want to remove the laser. So that will be done with a splice command. So we can go ship dot lasers j sorry, lasers.splice, and in brackets we can go j comma 1, and we also want to remove the asteroid. Well there's more we want to do, but this is just a temporary placeholder. So we'll go roid, roids.splice i comma 1. So that should remove the laser, remove the asteroid, and we don't need to continue cycling through this for loop. Once the laser, one, once we've detected a laser striking the asteroid and it's destroyed, we can break this. Break. Let's give that a go. Right, so there's some asteroids. Let's shoot one. Good. It's disappearing. There's another one. Bang. Bang. Now, in the original game, when you shoot one of these big asteroids, it actually breaks into two medium-sized asteroids, and then when you shoot a medium-sized asteroid, it breaks into two smaller asteroids, and then finally when you shoot a smaller asteroid, it's dead. It's completely dead. So we'll do the same sort of functionality. I'm thinking we should have a method call here, say destroy asteroid. Now the reason being, we'll pass its index, the reason being is that there's also another situation that we can destroy an asteroid. That's if we ram our ship into an asteroid, it also gets destroyed, like a kamikaze pilot or something. Now if we go up to our new, where we create the asteroid, so new asteroid, because we're going to have various sizes, I'm thinking that we'll need to uh, pass the radius in here. Right, so we'll have to find out where we're calling this so far and update it. So new asteroid, we'll pass that instead. I'd like to keep these as integers because we'll be using them as to compare what's, to figure out what size the uh, asteroids are. So we'll just do a maths.seal there. Because this roid size is, we don't know what that could be. Somebody could set it to 77, right? So there could be a fraction there. Good. Now let's create the destroy asteroid function. Now it will take the index, won't it? That's what we passed earlier. Destroy asteroid. Let's grab some of the properties first. So the x value will equal the roids index. That's the index being passed. Dot x 
and we'll grab the Y component and we'll also grab the, what else do we need to know? The radius? I think so. Of course we need to know the radius because we need to uh, split the asteroid in two if necessary. Remembering only the bigger ones need to be split necessary. So if the radius equals, so if the radius of the asteroid being hit is equal to the, basically this, that means it's the original size, the biggest size. If it equals that, we need to split it into two. So what, how we can do that is just go roids push new asteroid, new asteroid, and it requires X, Y, and R. So the X will be e equal to the same. We'll just set it to the same point. So X, the Y will be the same. The radius will be half the size. So we'll divide by four instead of dividing by two. Okay, and we want to do that twice because they split into two. Now naturally, because we're calling this new asteroid method, they'll also have random velocities and so on. So that will be fine. Else, if R equals, now if it equals this here, that means it's a medium one that's been, that's been hit. If it equals that, we want to do a similar sort of thing. So we'll just copy all that. But we want to break it into even smaller pieces. So divide by eight at the same location. And finally, destroy the asteroid. So the original asteroid that's been split, that's just where we can go uh, roids split, uh, splice. Roids splice. Now the start number is the index, and we just want to remove one. Destroy index. We also want to call this, don't we, elsewhere. Let's call that where our ship smashes into something. Uh, draw the lasers, detect hits on the asteroid. Check for asteroid collisions when not exploding. Yep, so when we explode the ship, we also want to destroy the asteroid. Now which number asteroid? It'll be equal to I here. I. Let's give it a go. Hopefully it'll work. So first of all, where's the asteroid? There's one. Shoot it. Great. It's splitting into two. The medium one's splitting into smaller ones. Now how about the smaller ones? Yep, they're getting destroyed. Awesome. Amazing we got that right first time round. So it seems to be working really well, except that we just need to test whether ramming one of them will destroy it. Bang, it did. Now will this split into two if I ram it? Awesome. Try it with the bigger one. Cool. There's just one issue that I've found, is that sometimes when you smash into it, you destroy more than one asteroid, especially when you're invincible, like that. See that the reason for it is that it's because it's it's cycling through all of the asteroids. So that's not right. All we need to do to fix that though is break there. So once our ship has exploded, it no longer continues destroying asteroids. Try that one more time. So when you're invincible and inside something, yeah, that's better. That should only break in that should break into two. Yep. Awesome. Great. There's just one last thing I'd like to do in this tutorial, and that's to create some graphical effect when the laser strikes an asteroid. So go right at the top, we'll set a duration for the laser explosion. So probably similar to this here, ship explode duration, we'll have a laser explode duration. Uh, let's set to say a bit smaller, say 0.1 of a second, so duration of the lasers explosion in seconds. Right, so we'll have to give our laser a property sim called explode time. So go down to where we shoot the laser. We'll add a property called explode time 
and it'll start off at zero, so that means it's not exploding. There is no more explosion remaining. Now go down to where we draw the laser. Uh, draw the lasers. Right. So here we want to say if ship lasers i dot explode time, if that equals zero, that means we're not exploding, and we'll just draw the normal laser beam, laser ball. Else, this is where we'll draw the explosion. Draw the explosion. So it's just going to be some concentric circles similar to what we did with our uh, ship when it collides with an asteroid. Um, how about, well, let's see what we can do here. How about we base it off the ship's radius? times by, say, 0.75. We'll do this a few more times. Uh, 0.5 and, say, 0.25. We'll just have two, because it's going to be a smaller circle, we'll just have three concentric circles. And the colors, well, they'll be based off this one. How about, I'll look some of these up before. Orange, red, salmon, and I think pink was a nice one. Then we'll have to go down and set the explosion time. So where we're detecting the hits, we don't want to remove the laser at this point. So we can go ahead and delete that. We want to destroy the asteroid and activate the laser explosion. We can do that just by set setting the property. So ship lasers, J isn't it? Yes, J dot uh, explode time. That will equal the the ceiling, so the rounding rounding up of the laser duration, the explode duration, times by the frame rate. We also only want to run this if all of this, if all of that equals zero. That means we're not exploding and the distance meets that requirement, then we'll destroy the asteroid and activate the laser explosion. Finally, we need to decrement the explode time. So go down to where we move the lasers. We also don't want the laser to be moving when it's exploding. So here we can handle the explosion. So if ship.lasers i, if the explode time is greater than zero, that means we're presently exploding, doesn't it? Else, we want to move the, sh move the laser and calculate the distance. We don't need to do these things when we're exploding. So we'll decrement the explode time here. So just minus minus, explode time minus minus. And then we want to destroy the laser uh, after the duration is up. So if explode time equals zero, then we will ship dot lasers dot splice i comma one. So we'll just remove the ith laser, and we'll just hit we'll just use the command continue here to prevent it from continue. Sorry, to prevent it from going over the remaining code, it'll just jump back to the full the next iteration of the for loop. Hopefully that should work. Let's take a look. Cool. So we've got ourselves a little blast radius. It looks pretty nice. It's working. Let's see if we can crash into a, an asteroid. Great. Bang, bang, bang. Looking pretty good. And that's the end of our tutorial for today. So today we made lasers that can be shot using the spacebar and blow up these asteroids and split them into two. Next time we'll focus on the difficulty of the game. So after you clear the field of asteroids, what happens? Well, I'm thinking there'll be more, there'll be more asteroids going faster maybe. And we'll probably focus on getting the points up and running. So large asteroids are worth less points than small ones because they're easier to hit. Okay, until next time, talk to you then. Bye.